Today's video, we're going to show you how to move your lead shoulder, right? Left shoulder for a right-handed golfer, so you can create a powerful pivot. It's pretty important. Yeah, the more we look at these high-level swings, I would put this in our top five key moves yeah. you got to make to make a strong pivot and make a great swing. So one way that we can all get a more powerful dynamic pivot is learning how to better use our lead shoulder, our left hand, left shoulder for a right handed golfer, right? In the backswing and that will, that'll provide um, a lot of movement, a lot of coil, a lot of turn when done correctly. When not done correctly, like we're seeing a big trend in golf right now, all sorts of things start to go off the rails very early in the swing. It's like with everything else, it's the devil is in the details. Because yep. you can tell someone to turn, and that, that's a hundred different ways they can do it. That's right. So I think what we're seeing a lot of, it's much like the, the idea that, hey, we don't want to sway in a swing. When golfers think about turning the left shoulder behind the ball, which is what we like to see in that direction, kind of over towards the middle of the stance, they're worried that they're going to sway. Well, I think a lot of it stems from really two, two maybe three things. One... You know, I want to get make sure I get my shoulders steep, right? Remember five, ten years ago, flat was killing everybody. Like now, so everybody got real <laughs> steep on it, right? So if you're trying to get this left shoulder down right off the bat, it's not going to turn much. Yeah, it, there's a, it, it has to move over and down some, but if you use up all the down and steepen, it's very difficult to do the over part. That's exactly right. You and, lock yourself. And the fear for the over part is the idea that the shoulders and chest are one unit, and they're not. So when, when guys think of, okay, I was told years ago to get my left shoulder over my right foot, that caused a big sway. My head moved a foot off the ball. I know swaying is bad in the golf swing. I know flat shoulders are bad in the golf swing, so I'm not going to do either one. Yeah, yeah, and they, that's a good point. If you do this correctly, what we're going to talk about here, your head doesn't have to move way off because you're kind of turning the pivot points different. If, you, if your pivot point's your left shoulder, that's really bad. Right? Yep, yep. If I pivot way around my right shoulder, that's really bad. Or if this one just stays here. Yeah, and I just move it like you that. You just move like that is what we see every single day. If you do this right, kind of around the middle of your chest, right, that left shoulder will move across, and the head doesn't have to sway off right, the ball. Right. So let's let's look at some real-world examples here of just that. And first one we're going to look at here is Justin P. Rose. 99. <laughs> I wonder who has Justin Rose. <laughs> Not so, him. <laughs> so a real easy way to see this in your own golf swing is just drop a line straight off your lead shoulder, Justin's left shoulder, and then put another line down the right side of your head. Okay, so that's those are the guardrails we're going to look at here in this video. All right, once we get him moving, and this camera moves around a little bit, I believe, you can see already he's already moving that lead shoulder and it's difficult to tell with a dark colored shirt on but you can see the uh, shoulder seam on his shirt start to really travel this direction absolutely and that little swoop that little line you made that's kind of the direction of it. it's a gradually down and over it's not a high up movement and it's not a straight down movement it's kind of a little little swooping motion that's right and we get him to the top of his swing now and get rid of my little doodles you can see now that Shoulder seam on his shirt is all the way over there, about a foot from where it started. He's displaced that shoulder over the shoulder, the middle of his stance. And the head hasn't done a whole lot. The, yeah. head's, the head's rotated a tiny bit, but it hasn't swayed. And, and you know, we're okay with some motion to the right with the head mm -hmm. because we don't like to feel like you lock anything in. But it responds to the good torso movements, Yes. right? If you do a good job with the upper body and the torso, the head's going to behave. Exactly. And that's right. how you want to look at it, instead of just locking your head in. And we see a number of our amateur golfers that come to see us where at the top of the swing, their left shoulder has basically stayed there. And they've kind of used that almost as a pivot point for the for the pivot. Yeah, and it's a kiss of death. They, they, they cannot get the body to move correctly when they do that. And if we pull a line up straight the back of the ball, you can see... He's well, got his shoulder well behind the ball, almost to the inside arch there of his trail foot, and without a lot of sway. This, this is, in the last six months, this one thing has helped me more than anything. Because, you know, I, the thing that I like about what Mike and I are doing now, we're, we're playing and practicing a lot more, and I think it's it's helping us a ton with our golfers, right? That come oh, absolutely. In. So yeah. we'll see stuff in gears and try it on ourselves first. And be like, well, that's to me, that was a game changer. I was guilty of trying to stay a little too locked in. 
I mean, I'm getting my shoulder across now without making too much of a head movement. And it fixed the one thing I've been working on for six months was not laying the club off going into the top. So don't discount these body movements and how it affects the club, right? Me, you, you watching, the guys you watch on TV, we're all working on the same things. And there's only so many swing elements and issues in the swing. We're all working on the same things. We're all maybe at different skill levels doing that, but we're all working the same problems. And it's one of those things, you know, I knew when I did it the first time, I, that's different. Yeah. That ball felt different. The body felt different in impact. It felt like the ball wasn't going to go left. It felt like the club was propped up differently at the top. So this is a big one, one of our probably top five. This is what you need to be doing in the golf swing. Yep. Let's look at another example here, and we'll go to a uh, driver. Look at Adam Scott. So we'll do the same thing with him. We'll change colors here. Cool video, by the way. It looks like he's working on his something. Alignment. His, I mean, yep. really? Got a little mirror down we, there. We, I don't see any amateurs doing this. <laughs> what are you saying? Probably you should. <laughs> All right. So we'll just throw our ball line up. It'll be easy to get behind a ball with a driver. All right. So get him moving. It's very early. I'm, we like his swing for a number of reasons. He does so many things. His textbook. Fundamentally well. There's his shoulder seam there at, at uh, the end of the takeaway, and then in the back swing. And we use one of his driver swing or one of his iron swings a lot in lessons. And he does the same thing with his iron swing. Yeah, and we always say, we're not getting you to try to swing like Adam Scott. We're taking the elements that the key movements that these great players put in their golf swing and just showing you that, hey, you could put some of this in your Absolutely. swing. Absolutely. So he's gone well over a foot of travel with that left arm, um, a big sweeping motion with the left arm. It hasn't dove down in order to get steep. His head's moved a tiny bit, but it's rotated more than it's swayed. Yeah, that's a big key. Yeah. That and shoulder seam moving over there without the head swaying way off. Exactly right. So – Use these lines when you're analyzing your own swing. They're really going to help you start to dial in your feels. And, you know, we're huge proponents of the live view camera system. Get yourself a live view so you can watch yourself do this in real time. That's when you really start to learn the feels for the proper movement. When you get direct visual feedback of what you're doing at, as you're doing it, to me, that's a game changer. Yep. All right. So I know a lot of you may be thinking, okay, I'm 55 years old. I'm 60 years old. I don't have the range of motion Adam Scott or – or Justin P. Rose has. Here's one of our senior tour players, recent winner, and we're going to show you exactly the same thing. And only now we're looking at him in gears. We're going to highlight here his shoulder joint right there so you can see him. And we'll go ahead and put the same lines up just to be consistent. And now we're looking kind of down on the swing plane at the golfer to give you a little clearer view. So as he gets moving, you can see there's no, and we see this all the time, the club get moving without that shoulder moving. Everything starts to move away. You're starting to turn right away. And what's cool about this view is you can see how he gets his shoulder, which is now right here, past his spine, which is right there. So he has gotten to the trail side with his lead shoulder. And you can see the travel. It made that same gradual little swoosh down there from where it started mm -hmm. to where it ends up. It puts him in a good spot to make a strong pivot back through the ball. Absolutely. And again, the head hasn't swayed, you know, maybe half an inch or so, but it hasn't really darted to the right. So you're doing this by turning rather than just pulling your left shoulder over behind the golf ball. Yeah, you're not doing much travel with the center of your body. You're just bringing that left shoulder across. Exactly right. All right, so with this in mind, let's jump into, let's go to the warehouse, jump into some drills, show you how to do this in your swing. All right, for the first drill, we're going to teach you how to move correctly in, in the backswing, basically, right? Yeah. And um, it's a, a pivot drill with a little bit of a twist on it, because we have a lot of people coming into lessons that struggle with it, so we came up with this way to teach it. So, go ahead. Yeah, so we've got a mobility stick, and you can use anything from a broomstick, a paint pole, is something that's longer than a normal club that has some resistance. So you're gonna to wanna to put it behind your shoulders like this, right? So it's really gonna to start to open up your chest and you can feel the stretch coming through without, because um, what golfers have a tendency to do is, is be really rounded forward and that, that reduces mobility. So you wanna open your chest, the club behind you, and you're just gonna work on getting some movement. Now, 
At first, you may get a lot of sway off, right? I'm keeping my four bend as I do that. That's okay at first, but eventually you want to do, Sean, if you'll kind of put your head over there or hand. Yeah, I'm going to give him about an inch to play with here. So he's moving the left side over towards a spot, at least in line with the ball, right? Yeah, let's put a ball down here yeah. and let's see. So I'm, I'm visualizing the ball and I want to at least get my stick here past the ball. Yeah. And then if I get a little more bold, I want to try to get it towards my foot. And that's about where my max stretch is right there, all without trying to do it this way. And I think uh, the important thing is when he does that, you know, if, if you drew a line against the left hip and the left shoulder, you want to be moving away from that in this part of the backswing here. Don't think that you have to tilt this way to start that motion. Yeah, this is, this is a kind of winding up, right? Boom, and then I can kind of fall back and recenter. A lot of golfers will just do that, and that's certainly what we want to avoid. Yeah, I think the trick to it is keep the head fairly still. You can move a little bit. You've got to move the shoulder and the hip across. And it may at first seem like you're moving way off the ball, but just monitor your head movement and you'll be fine. Exactly right. Now, to transition that from with a club in your hand, so you're going to get the body moving first, right? To feel that is super, super important. Now you're going to take your club right here, and you're just going to prop your arms up. So from look something like that, okay? Now I'm gonna to try to feel the same movements. Yeah, that puts him in a really good spot at the top. Yep. So it's set up at a dress, fold the arms, make the pivot motion, then just lift the arms straight up. And that'll get you not only a good spot with the body, but it gets the club propped up between the arms. Boom, boom. There and then go. make your downswing. Now, that's gonna to start to fire the synapses here when you're doing a lot of this, because a lot of you we're gonna be used to getting the arms to the top by pulling them across you. And that's not gonna be available for you. So nobody would do this and then pull it across them, but that's what a lot of you do in your swing. So there's a lot of benefit with doing this drill. Be patient, first of all. Turn, extend the arms. If it's only down here at first, that's fine. If it's up here, fine. Make slow down swings. Film yourself when you're doing this so you can actually see what it looks like. Cause I think you're gonna see the swing be a little bit longer than what it feels like at first. Yeah, because you're using a, a big turn and not as much arm run off. Right. The other thing I like about it, it gets the right arm up off the body a little bit, which gives you some room on the downswing to almost make that little shallowing move everyone's trying to get. That's a great point. So we're not starting with the arms down like this. You're starting with the arms out, a little bit extended. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Then you're right. If I move my left arm, here. you can see, I'm trying to get this this tricep area kind of level with the ground is a good place to look at. Perfect spot to start down from. Yep, do this and you will see a bigger pivot, more powerful pivot, and then you'll start to tie the arms into it for a really powerful downswing. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy it, go ahead and give it a like. Also, if you have any questions about today's video or you have an idea of a video that you want us to shoot, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. We read every single comment. We also respond to the comments. So again, leave us a comment if you have any questions or if there's anything you'd like to see. Now, if you haven't already, click the subscribe button. We have videos coming out every single week and we don't want you to miss one. So by clicking subscribe, that ensures you're notified right away when a new video comes out. And hey, if you want to add instant distance to your drive, and we all do, everybody wants more distance, go ahead and click the link in the pinned comment below. You're going to see a link. Click on it. It's going to take you to a page. You're going to enter your name and email address. We're going to send you an email where you're going to get access to instant distance, which is a video training that we put out. We know it's going to help you. We know we're going to see you farther down the fairway.